के देखो Hello. Hey, everyone. Hey, Lee. Hey, Daniel. Hey. How you doing? Good. Good. It's, uh, well, yeah, I, I'm going to try to keep the wisecracks to myself. But never mind. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing rather well. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's weird times, right? All around. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm bound to get myself in trouble with a poorly done joke. It's just... <laughs> I think the last time I bumped into you, Lee, was uh, San Diego, Sunnier Times, right? Uh, yeah, well, they were. Yeah. Uh, boy, um, I got to say the, the, um, the week of cube cons are, oh, those things are a blur. They are. Are, they are. Yeah. They're amazing, aren't they? But they are a blur. Yeah. 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 Well, since we're on the, by the way, uh, <laughs> by the way, this is a, a CNCF uh, uh, hosted call and so as such we record the calls and post them on, on the community and, and etc and I say that to say that since we're on the record I will say that uh, yeah I'm why well, uh, I understand but but uh, just I can't help but still be disappointed that we're not I'm uh, really jonesing for some uh, some like face-to-face -face interactions some some sharing with with others so I'm really hopeful for some at least a physical conference or two in the next mm. six months, year. Yeah. It is going to be difficult, isn't it? Yeah. I'm looking forward to KubeCon EU. We've got a bunch of presentations lined up for that one, virtual, albeit, but that's uh, that should be good fun. Yeah, trying to recreate some of that community buzz in the Slacks and on Zooms and things. Yeah, the hall. I just haven't seen the hall. The hallway just hasn't been the same virtually. I haven't <laughs> seen it done. It's hard. No, yeah. without that, that, that's the actual connection. It's very hard. I. I Well, uh, let me put a, a link to the meeting minutes in into chat. All right, fair enough. Who, who else do we have here? We've got Luke, um, Nikolai, we've got Watson. Amy, Syme, Jonathan, Matt, David. Very good. All right, we, we're about four after, three after now. If the meeting minutes are a community effort, um, so please don't be shy. If you're on the call today and uh, your fingers still work, go ahead and slap your name into the, uh, the attendees list there. And we've really just got one agenda item today, which will give, uh, I think, you, uh, the present, today's uh, maintainers and presenters um, some, some comfort and some room to, to tell us about um, Ambassador, to tell us about their, their project. And uh, hopefully won't overflow this uh, SIGS plate. Uh, so so I'm, I'm pleased that we just have one, one item on the agenda today. So. Um, with that, we're a few minutes. We're a few minutes after, so let's let's go ahead and get going. Um, Daniel is here with us, um, and so is so is Richard, and I think probably so are some other folks representing uh, those that have put blood, sweat, and tears, I suspect, into <laughs> Ambassador. Quite right. Got oh, the T-shirt as well to prove it. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
Um, with that, um, Daniel, are you presenting today? Are you going to? Yeah, um, yeah, I'll be presenting. That's OK. Oh, very if I good. grab the screen. Please. Can everyone see me OK? There it is. We've got, we've got it. Sweet. Well, so I'll just pretty, yeah, so folks on the call that haven't bumped into me, my name is Daniel Bryant, product architect at DataWire. Richard Lee, co-founder and CEO of DataWire is also on the call as well. I'll be presenting today and then Richard and I can take questions at, at the end. DataWire is the uh, sort of the founder and the steward, if you like, of Ambassador at the moment. And this is our discussion around the proposed donation to the CNCF. The TLDR, Ambassador is an open source API gateway for Kubernetes, powered by Envoy, very much focusing on the north-south use case. We're, we've tried to make it as developer focused and developer friendly in the cloud space as possible. So custom resources for configuring your endpoints, your routing and so forth. We support Kubernetes ingress too, very much into open standards. Uh, hat tipped Alex Gervais on, on the DataWire team. He's been working hard on the Kubernetes 1.18 ingress class support and the path type field as well. And there's wide adoption in the, in the industry. We've, we're using like thousands of orgs, lots of Docker pulls, uh, 3,000 plus folks in our uh, community Slack, and over 130 contributions and, and non-trivial contributions. I'll, I'll run through some of those later on, but there's some fantastic people in the community really you know, sort of contributing uh, to interesting discussions, interesting bits of code that's extending Ambassador all the time. So we are a effectively a control plane onto Envoy. Uh, we are focused at the north-south use case, and we convert Kubernetes config or your mappings and so forth into Envoy config under the hood. Envoy is a data plane, traffic routed through. I'm sure on this call, folks, you've seen the contour stuff, you've seen probably other gateways, probably nothing new to yourself, so I'll skip over that and we can you know, move on to the perhaps more interesting uh, content. We've come a long way in three years. So uh, I think it was early, early March 2017 uh, when we announced the, the, the project. Uh, we had the 1.0 release early this year, which was like super exciting. Uh, really, really pumped to see that. Uh, GitHub stars, 2.8K, because you know we like GitHub stars is the way to measure the success of any project, right? That's the standard cloud native metric. But um, but you know it shows interest. It shows like the appreciation of, of the, the sort of the supporters uh, into the into the actual project. We've had 130 contributors. Uh, I counted earlier on today actually 1,700 um, pull requests. And uh, if you want to read more about sort of the, the later journey of our 1.0 release and so forth, I've, I've put the blog blog post for you there. It's been a fantastic ride. I've been involved in a whole bunch of this uh, time. Rich has obviously been there from day zero. Uh, it's been just amazing working with the community. We're looking forward to driving this forward uh, on in the future too. Core features, again, I probably won't labor this too much because I'm assuming this crowd are pretty happy with sort of Envoy features and we layer on on top. We provide that ease of use. We provide that north-south use case and we provide that you know, ease of use for developers. Some interesting things I will point out uh, from the sort of resilience side there, if you look to the left, and uh, for example, we do have all your standard resilience features, but we've also had auth from a very early, um, a very early development uh, initiative in Ambassador. Initially, it was a custom extension to Envoy. Uh, we then worked with the upstream Envoy community, helped form the ext auth z uh, interface, and we've worked through that now, and that's actually, you know, once it was upstreamed into Envoy, we then changed Ambassador to use that well-established, well-agreed API as well. So we love working with the upstream Envoy community. Uh, fantastic community all around there. Rate limiting, for example, is done by the um, RLS Proto as well. I've got, if you look at my blog, or our blog, I should say, I've got some Java services where I've created Java rate limiting services and plugged them into Ambassador using the Lyft example, using the Lyft rate limiter example as well. So hat tip to the Lyft team. On, on, I'm sure Matt's on the call somewhere. So yeah, hat tip to the team there, Matt. Observability, all the good stuff from Envoy, and we have distributed tracing, Zipkin, Jaeger support, metrics with Stats D and Prometheus, um, log, all the goodness with the logs. From the cloud native perspective, um, we have service discovery with Kubernetes services, Kubernetes endpoints, and also console as well. So console has been really interesting from a uh, sort of hybrid use case situation. If your pod uh, the ambassador is deployed in can route to somewhere on the network, you can route out of the Kubernetes cluster. So people in Google uh, GKE uh, and GCP use IP aliasing uh, in their network and they have VMs running, they have um, GKE running, ambassador running in there with console, and we can use console for service discovery for IPs and ports, and we can route not only to Kubernetes services, 
we can route to VMs outside of the cluster. So that kind of supports the lift and shift, the hybrid model. That's been a super interesting journey and a hat tip to the HashiCorp folks we worked with quite closely there. A fantastic community as, as we all know. And that's been a really interesting sort of enabling use case for getting folks who are perhaps stuck with the VMs or not even stuck, they like the VMs, but they want to dabble with Kubernetes too. All the other stuff, you know, good stuff, zero downtime config. We use uh, Kubernetes, all the, all the privileges in Kubernetes to manage our state. So ambassador pods can come up and down. The state is stored within Kubernetes itself. L7 support, again, hat tip to Envoy. This is basically building on, on all the great stuff in Envoy there. Nothing too exciting on, on that one um, from, from our perspective, but obviously super useful. The L7 routing is becoming really a big thing as folks move more towards microservices, APIs, there's more things at the edge. So to be able to do all this clever L7 routing based on headers, based on you know jots and all, all manner of things is really powerful. And we're just you know providing that nice API, that nice experience onto all the power that Envoy provides under the hood. Our primary use case is in the API gateway space. Traffic management, app security, app development, you know, allowing folks to sort of move at their own pace, do different releases, they can contribute to their own Kubernetes files with the mappings in, so different teams can go at different paces. All the good patterns we see with cloud native, all the good patterns we see with microservices, it decoupling and independent release. We do see some folks running multiple ambassadors, that's a totally valid use case, often with an internal and an external ambassador, so like internal devs and then external API offering on top. They can change at different paces and, and so forth. We do, we don't really encourage it, but we do see this hub and spoke model too. It's like a bit of a service mesh light type thing, where if you're running a very shallow graph of services, maybe you've got the monolith and you're breaking out services, as long as you're comfortable routing traffic around sort of the outside, you can use ambassador as that service discovery sort of mechanism, if you like, or that routing mechanism. Config wise, so custom resources and ingress um, config. So we have mappings and host. Again, folks used to sort of all the um, uh, traditional uh, routing like Nginx, HA proxy. This is probably nothing new there. You have your endpoints, your backend services, hosts, you can configure your hosts, your TLS config, that kind of good stuff too. And then from, I think it was September last year, we added support for ingress as well. So if you're comfortable and like using Kubernetes ingress, you're good to go there. As I mentioned earlier on in the TLDR, we're continuing support for open standards. So hat tip to Alex Gervais, doing all this fantastic work around here with the rest of the team. Um, we are, um, we've released uh, the, I think the latest version of Ambassador supports uh, the, what is it, the ingress class and the path type field as well. And we've blogged about it. And we're also, I think the final stage is now of getting a nice Kubernetes um, blog uh, update on, on all the work, that, all the fantastic work that Alex and the team working with the wider community to implement this and to add our uh, experience onto this as well. So it's been a fantastic journey. I know Alex has thoroughly enjoyed working with the, the wider community to test out these ideas, give his opinions and so forth. In terms of um, being sort of proven and growing rapidly, we have many production deployments, just a handful we picked out here, mainly because they've, they've done great blogs and they've done KubeCon presentations. And, and there's been, as Lee and I were talking sort of earlier on off mic, always love the KubeCons. And this is a highlight for myself, Richard, the whole team, actually people coming up to us at the booth, coming up to us when we're doing talks and saying, hey, we use Ambassador, we're doing this. Um, AppDirect, fantastic story, Ticketmaster, sure needs no introduction. Chick-fil-A blew my mind because Chick-fil-A run uh, a Kubernetes cluster in each of their restaurants around the US. So I was chatting to this person in the booth and he said, oh, I'm, I'm you know, Chick-fil-A, we run like hundreds of ambassadors because we run an ambassador in every Kubernetes cluster in each of our restaurants, kind of like at the edge use case. And that was just hearing his story of how they managed this stuff was just fascinating, right? So love learning from you know, production use cases and it feeds back into our design goals, feeds back into things we put back into the community too. In terms of community contributions, I'm um, just sort of highlighting, this is our latest release. It's just one release. I want to pull out a few interesting things. A hat tip to Prakar Joshi, uh, contributed um, preserving X request IDs, then multiple envoys, got multiple envoys in the stack. Um, Great work, like a uh, chat to Prakar on, the, uh, on our Slack. He worked with Flynn on the dev side. Uh, he works at uh, Hotstar, which is like the uh, Indian, uh, say Netflix, and it's where Disney Plus is available over in India. Uh, he was loving the community, loving get involved. And we really appreciate this kind of tweet shouting out, you know, yes, like we recognize the, the community, the contributing experience is super important to an open source project. Other couple of hat tips to Phil Pebble there, um, contributing the, um, uh, the setting the Envoy shared memory base ID to allow multiple uh, Envoy proxies in a pod. So if you've got Istio there, it was his use case and you're running Ambassador 2. That was a you know great bit of work, lots of fun chatting to Phil on, on the Slack. 
really big, big and interesting piece of work. Um, shout out to Noah Fontes there from Puppet. And um, Puppet have got uh, relay.sh which is their take on GitHub Actions uh, or Argo, that kind of thing. And Noah has been doing some fantastic work uh, with the Knative support uh, with Ambassador. So he's been doing some performance improvements, uh, support for path and timeout options in the, in the Knative gateway. And he's working on some blog posts. That's just a fantastic story all around. So we really enjoyed seeing more and more advanced contributions to Ambassador from the community. Robot wise, Richard and I thought about breaking it down into to two strands here. From an experience point of view, we're all about making it easier to use. You know, a common complaint I think we hear across the cloud native stack is there's just too many things. And once you've made your decision, often they're quite complicated to weave all together. So we've worked really hard to make it as easy as possible to get up and running with your mappings, with your hosts. We're looking to improve documentation. I think that's, again, that's a common theme throughout the CNCF space and good documentations are worth their weight in gold and, and we're always looking to make them better and community contributions are fantastic here. More tutorials, more integrations, um, improving the contributor experience. Although you know, we have plenty of contributors, uh, we'd love to get some insight from the CNCF here. We'd love to get some guidance from the CNCF on how to make this even better. Because again, if we're all trying to drive forward the innovation of the North-South use case for Envoy, we think we're in a great position to do that or to, to help do that. But we'd love the input from the CNCF to make that, make that happen. Features wise, WASM support, obviously in the Envoy space, WASM is, is super hot, that is in general, but we'd love to um, look at this as well as in our future roadmap. Caching API coming on the roadmap, IP allow and deny, very popular request on, on our GitHub, very popular discussion points on Stack Overflow and in our Slack and so forth, and a continuing our support for emerging standards like the service API we mentioned earlier on and the ingress, um, new ingress features. So CNCF donations, so we're going for an incubation proposal. Uh, it's a mature project ambassador. We'd love to advance a north-south use case for Envoy. Again, I think I'm, you know, I don't need to really preach too hard here. We all know and love Envoy. And we think the north-south use case is a really important part for that, the edge proxy, the ingress uh, part of your cluster. We've got production, um, you know, approved in production, thousands of deployments, lots of interesting um, use cases we've, we've linked to in the deck. We can, we can share more. We're all about driving this cloud native best practices for Kubernetes ingress. And again, that's, you know, I think that gels nicely with the CNCF goal of, of promoting this cloud native experience, all the architectures, all the operational models and how we configure is a big part of this. We're really invested in declarative config, love the GitOps. We frequently chat to the WeWorks team around these, these things, uh, self-service, comprehensive integrations into the CNCF ecosystem, Prometheus, all these kind of good things too. And like I mentioned, we are focusing on the north-south traffic management use case, but we're, we're making it as easy to integrate with east-west too. We, we have integrations, you know, with um, Linkerd, with Console and with Istio. We often find that, um, you know, folks get on board with, say, the north-south use case. They spin up Kubernetes. They get some CI and some CD in there just to deploy their containers in. The next thing they need to do is get traffic into that cluster. That's the ingress. When they start you know, doing more microservices, they often want to move towards service mesh. So we were, we're looking to make that as easy, that, that on-ramp as easy as possible for them. The community has been fantastic. It's been humbling being part of this. Um, we'd like to make it better. Again, that's what we'd love the CNCF's guidance, CNCF's help in this space, but plenty of Slack users, lots of contributions um, and multiple KubeCon talks. Some we don't even know sometimes. A few years ago, we, we heard the Knative folks talking about Ambassador and we were like, hang on, you're talking about ambassador this is fantastic and that's what then triggered even more work around knative too so yeah it's just found this humbling to see folks building on our technologies we'd like to help them do that even more the asks from the cncf uh, we're looking for the vendor neutral home to grow the ambassador community to grow the north south use cases for, for envoy and kubernetes we love help with cic and cd or more, more focused probably on cd continuous delivery infrastructure and assistance in improving the docs how to the general kind of onboarding experience the general um, contribution experience because we recognize if we're trying to do all these goals we're trying to drive forward the north south use case for, for envoy for kubernetes for all the cloud native tech it's all about making it easy for developers particularly the you know late majority, the late adopters, this is a big hurdle for them. So we'd really love some guidance and some help from the CNCF on, on how to improve this experience for folks looking to get traffic into their Kubernetes clusters. At that point, I should say thanks for your time. Uh, happy to take any questions. Richard and I can jump into this too. And we'd love to have chats about sponsorship too. Thank you, Daniel. This is great. This is great. Uh, I've got a, a couple of questions, um, but 
will will bite my tongue for a little bit to <laughs> solicit uh, questions and, and comments and um, from others on the call. If you like me in the UK time zone, I know it is late. I've had a couple of extra coffees. So I'm kind of good. Uh, this is Watson. I have a, a question. Are you guys building on ARM? Uh, when you say that, Watson, uh, what uh, is that we are not currently building on ARM, although we've had starting to see a couple requests for that. So um, it's something we'd like to do, um, but we haven't actually um, looked at it beyond sort of a theoretical, um, sort of a theoretical perspective. It doesn't seem like it's super hard to do, but um, we just haven't done it. Okay. Um, but we love com community contributions. <laughs> yeah, right, that's so, a good point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Wilson. Thank you. Go on, I'm, I'm I see you reaching for a question. Go on. <laughs> now, yeah, I'm leaving space for others. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Very hard practice for me. That was. Uh, There's a lot of strength in that silence just then. So. <laughs> Um, the of the uh, so good so pleased to see and kind of confirm that 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 the proposal here is at an incubation level which is um, you know appropriate uh, the thousands of deployments or kind of the the numbers around that uh, how are those measured how are those confirmed I, I think it's uh, a little bit of triangulation um, I mean we you know, we based on sort of the number of folks we have in the Slack, and um, you know, we get some data from Docker pulls. Uh, it you know, people pull all the time, so you know, it's yeah. a little hard uh, to say. Um, so, um, but you know, we we actually shifted from key.io to Docker Hub because of the, the persistent outages, and um, and. Uh, with in a week, we had half a million pulls. Um, you know, so so based on sort of just sort of general triangulation and and things like that, based on what we hear, you know, that's that's our best estimate. But we don't have anything you know super precise that we can share. So uh, fair enough. Yeah. Um, is there? Uh, do you guys have a perspective on? other projects or other um, alternative uh, tools that people use in the space. Uh, so, so it's, we, you know, Contour is, uh, is an example of, of one of those. Um, how, how, how and when do you, you guys find that, that someone is, is drawn to ambassador versus, you know, other, other, other way, other alternatives? Uh, I think when people want to extend their ingress for sort of, um, more broader use cases. Um, that's a, that's a big one. So we we we've actually had a lot of users migrate from Contour to Ambassador because Contour hasn't supported authentication, and uh, authentication is a pretty common requirement at the edge. Mm, um, in the enterprise context, you know, and and you can argue whether or not it belongs in an ingress controller or not, but you know the reality is is that if you're exposing something over the internet, you probably want authentication. Um, so we take sort of a probably a little bit more of an extensible approach um, in terms of exposing like the rate limiting APIs, authentication APIs. Um, I think the other sort of area um, where we've historically tried to do a little bit more work is just integrating with um, different other projects. Um, and we're not super opinionated as to if you're like a cloud SaaS thing, you know, some folks from Datadog contributed um, how you integrate with Datadog. They're obviously not open source. Right, uh, but we also had folks who contributed to Prometheus and a Grafana dashboard. Um, so we've worked pretty hard to try to make it because there's so many things that you have to install to get Kubernetes working the way you want. Um, we've tried to make it easy to just integrate with, you know, all the other stuff you need. Um, so I'd say that's probably the. So there's a ton of how-tos on our website around Istio, Linkerd, Console, mm, yeah. Manager, et cetera. So I'd say that's the other area.
I know the contour folks, Lee, uh, linked off to a couple of um, community driven uh, matrices as well. We keep an eye on those. They're not 100% uh, accurate sometimes because, you know, stuff, obviously the pace of the community, like it does change a lot. But we're actually working with some folks now, like um, I've forgotten the names uh, uh, temporarily, but they reached out to us and said, hey, you know, can you give us an update on what Ambassador supports so we can ping you the link to those as well and, and as they get published. Because um, it is interesting, like folks uh, outside of the R community are just, you know, keeping an eye on, on um, all these things. Uh, the sort of checkbox stuff in some ways, L7 Sport, L4 Sport, SNI, you know, check, check, check. And then we always add sort of extra comments on on top in terms of what the, as Richard has mentioned, what integrations being super important. There's additional value over the checkbox stuff, but the checkbox stuff is covered quite nicely by external uh, folks. Yeah, that, thanks for that. I'd be interested in, in that link or, or, or if there's some now, yeah. Um, yeah, it's even, it's, uh, it's even more helpful when it's third parties that are putting together mm. perspectives. Yeah. So, um, Making sure they're correct is the key thing. That's yeah. the... <laughs> uh, I'm going to give some quiet time for others that might have questions. Uh, hi, Daniel. Hey, Zen. Uh, yes, you can hear me? We can. Uh, Daniel, I have a just question that... Uh, for the, um, I, I have been in the past seeing the contour damming right, the, damming the things they have done. So they have a very good useful of use case of them when you have an ingress controller for that and you have a fully quite qualified domain name that have a very, very similar to that. So can, in, a, in a native Kubernetes ingress, ingress you can't uh, do the same fully qualified domain name, name for separate to ingress, ingress services. So, but using Contour, you can achieve that. I, it's, it's have some very unique use cases, but people often talk about that, or you have an ingress controller, and for, let's say I have a www.test.com, and you have a same uh, ingress services that have a same www.test.com, and slash dev or other product. They have a limitation, but they have the uh, unique, uh, uh, sort of uh, domain name. So in using Contour, you can do that. But in native Kubernetes cluster, you couldn't do that. So is that a thing in Ambassador API as well? So I, I so Sam, this is Richard. So so to make sure I understand, you're basically asking, can you can you have multiple TLS hosts on the same ingress controller, right? Is that is that correct? Uh, uh, Richard, I just, uh, uh, just have a unique case that I've lost doing about yes. that. Yeah. So, so, so the answer is yes, you can have multiple uh, different fully qualified domain names. Um, you know, the, the reason why I think a lot of ingress controllers don't necessarily support this is because it's not really um, part of the ingress spec. Um, and so common use case though would be, you know, you want, you have two different domains you know, a.com and b.com that you want to host on the same Kubernetes cluster, expose the same ingress controller, and you also want TLS with them. Mm -hmm. and so, um, and so you need to support uh, SNI, um, and then, you know, based on your SNI headers, you route the correct host, you route, uh, you return the right certificate, right, do the right TLS stuff with each host. Um, and so that's, that's a use case that um, we do have people uh, using ambassador in production for. Um, I'll bring up the topic of telepresence uh, so, uh, and to kind of acknowledge that, well, that, uh, hey, this isn't um, some of you, the, the project maintainers, um, you know, Richard and, and Daniel. And, and by the way, are there other um, maintainers on the call of Ambassador? Don't uh, think so. Uh, no, not, not today. Tonight. Yeah. Okay, very very good. Uh, I wanted to be make sure that we were, I was being inclusive with my uh, statements. So, um, but I think that it's probably important to note that as we're reviewing and, and considering um, ambassador, that um, Richard and Daniel and, and other folks that that steward ambassador have had some experience with uh, already having a project yep. in the CNCF. Um, 
clearly since you're, you're looking to donate another one, that experience has gone well. Um, any reflections there? Anything that you're looking um, to, uh, to do differently from the, you know, from uh, I, mean, I mean, I think it's like, so we've had a positive experience with CNCF. Um, telepresence is a sandbox project. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the engagement level with the CNCF for telepresence has been, I'd characterize as a little more arm's length. Um, and which is, which is perfectly appropriate given its sandbox nature and, you know, and I think we've also been caught up in the, the vortex of what is sandbox, which seems to be a thread <laughs> that reemerges on the TOC every few months. Um, so, so, uh, you know, we have, a, I would say we have higher expectations around um, incubation um, as, uh, and, and, you know, ambassador, I would say just from a community um, and breadth of adoption standpoint is more mature than telepresence. Mm -hmm. um, so we think incubation is appropriate. So we would expect um, sort of just uh, more, um, more engagement with uh, the CNCF community around ambassador. And I would, I would hope that the community kind of pushes us um, in directions we may not have considered. Um, and, and we consider that to be a good thing, so. Definitely one thing I'd add to that. It has been the, the sort of facilitation aspect, Lee, like going to the KubeCons, doing the presentation of the maintainers track. Um, you know, just meeting sort of folks has been fantastic. As in, like I did the um, 101 talk at, must in San Diego, and I've done the other ones as well. And that visibility, even at the sandbox level, was great. To Richard's point, I definitely think the sort of, with incubation to be even more more of that but that alone has been fantastic it gives us that platform to talk about what we're doing to get the input to have those kind of hallway breakout sessions where we can share and learn that's just been for me fantastic just seeing that part of the cncf yeah oh, well, very good um of the um oh, okay. uh, another topic D data wire um considers ambassador something of a um Huh. Of the enterprise offerings around Ambassador, Ambassador is—is uh, is it fair to characterize that as an open core um, project? Yeah, yeah. We basically have a a non-open source sidecar that you can deploy in the same pod as Ambassador that provides additional enterprise features. Um, sort of our general belief um, is that we want to make sure that's and that's also why the the open source component has just um, public APIs that are all documented. Um, and we, uh, our, our sidecar just uses the exact same APIs. Um, so, um, so folks can choose to replicate um, all the functionality of our sidecar, which includes, you know, OpenID Connect and OAuth and all this other stuff, or they can, um, or we have lots of users um, who don't uh, and just, just use our APIs um, in the open source and, and build their own authentication service. Um, and so, um, so that's, that's sort of how um, our business operates. Oh, very good. Of the, of that proprietary sidecar, is that uh, in the presence of that, is there a disabling of, um, are, are the two, um, hmm, yeah, you know, I'm, I've been in service mesh land focused there so much that I'm, uh, yeah, no, okay, very good. So you add, you add on the sidecar. Does that add a, um, a network hop in the way in which the sidecar works? Or is that a yeah, the, memory? The sidecar is deployed on the same pod or the same, it's really, and we usually just, you know, actually package in the same container because it's just easier. So um, so it's, it is over gRPC, but it's over local host. So, um, so there's, no, there's no network hop per se, but, um, but it is a separate Fair. process, yeah. <laughs> okay. I think that's a fair response considering that I used the word hop or that. Uh, <laughs> very good. Um, other questions? Uh, from Yeah. Um, I noticed on the slide, um, you all said that you wanted some, maybe some assistance with CICD from the CNCF. That was one of the asks or something like that. What, what all were you all looking for there? Uh, I think um, so. So a few things. Uh, one is um, uh, not sure what CNCF is planning on doing in terms of supporting um, ephemeral Kubernetes clusters. 
right? So we have we have a pretty comprehensive regression, um, and we want we run the regression all against Kubernetes clusters, right? So being able to support that particular use case where you spin up an ephemeral Kubernetes cluster, run our full regression. Um, you know, we have thousands of tests at this point. Um, you know, um, and we run, we also run performance regressions. There's a lot of, uh, so being able to support those use cases in sort of cleaner ways would be very helpful. Um, and then- Multiple the, Kubernetes versions, Richard, as well? You yeah, say? multiple Kubernetes versions, right? And then the, to, to an earlier question, right? Um, it'd be great to support ARM, right? Um, you know, so- That was question, ARM, yeah. So API supports ARM um, and, uh, you know, um, and I know there are different CI providers to support ARM, but um, but yeah, we, we would need CI to run ARM, so. Okay, thanks. Um, I guess there are some provisions in CNCF to probably get, I mean, if you guys were, uh, probably would need to do the work, but um, as far as packet clusters, packet uh, resources, so you could have ARM machines as well as regular AMD machines I and mean, you can install your own uh, Kubernetes clusters there um, and there's plenty uh, of resources there um, and you should be able to get some type of uh, permission for that um, as far as assistance with porting things to ARM I don't know how much assistance yeah. you can get for that yeah, I, I I don't think we would. I mean, of course, how porting to ARM would be great. Um, I, I think it's more um, in so much as there's because we can't be the only project that runs regression tests of software that gets deployed in Kubernetes clusters, right? So, uh, in so much as there's infrastructure or projects um, in that vein, um, those are things that we would definitely want to take advantage of. So. Uh, good. Given that we have a little time, um, maybe some additional details around uh, we were, well, we were talking about the, the number of contributors and kind of the, the diversity of the uh, maintainership, um, kind of the, the project governance and, and uh, I guess um, what, what else can you, you, you guys say there? So I'm just kind of looking through now is the, the roadmap is is uh, public facing or kind of how, how are the, how's the community run and, and sort of, you know. I, I'd say, you know, it, it's, it's very much a work in progress. Um, you know, I think a lot of the, the things we've added are uh, people typically file GitHub issues and we get people, people tend to vote up um, popular GitHub issues. And those, that tends to be a big sort of source of prioritization for us. And then, you know, people sometimes just show up and there's this pull request and, um, you know, and, and that's great, right? So that's how um, we learned about Noah working on uh, Knative because he opened this pull request and it was, a, it was a pretty sophisticated pull request and we had to get on, you know, a couple calls with him, um, go back and forth um, to before we could get to the point where, um, you know, we could land, um, land his changes, right? So. Um, we have a, we have a developer's channel. Um, so all the chatter from both our internal and external developers are all on a public, public channel. So, um, we have, we, we have that. And then, um, and basically, um, and we'll probably need to formalize this, but essentially, uh, the folks who have become maintainers, not from DataWire, they basically just jump in and then, um, it turns out that they know more about some part of the system than we do. So we're just like, okay, well. Um, we're not qualified to, to, we're not the best person to actually review the code. So do you mind, uh, you know, overseeing this part of the code? And, um, and that's what happens. So. Got it. Uh, understood. The uh, frequency by which the community meets. Or, uh, or, so or... we don't have formal community calls, right? So this is, uh, so it's a little more ad hoc. Um, and there's just a, uh, and most of it just happens through our developer Slack channel. And then for complicated things, we just hop on the phone um, with a, a contributor to just work through, 
issues that take too long to work through on GitHub. And we do get together at KubeCons. That's a fantastic resource. Like to, again, the hallway track. Like we had a dinner last year at San Diego, got a bunch of folks together. Uh, last one, the Go Spot Check folks came along and we were chatting to them. So that's kind of a touch point in real life, which obviously we're missing at the moment. But um, we're more than happy to yeah extend it onto the virtual world as well via Zoom. Nice. Um, and then to, to clarify of the of all of that ambassador is, uh, so there, there's an ambassador operator and maybe maybe a few other things as well that I'm, I'm not familiar with, but to, to clarify the, of what we're looking at um, donating here is, is, is which, which repositories and, and which, what all is this? I think we, um, I mean, logically it's the ambassador repository, um, which is sort of the main repository under data wire. Um, I, I'm not, and I'm, and I'm guessing, I haven't talked to some of the folks we know better, uh, there are probably some assorted, assorted sort of dependent repositories that are needed to, to, to move. Um, but sort of the, the primary repository would be the, the ambassador repository. And that's where like all of our documentation sits and the code and you know, all that sort of stuff. I think we have like, um, there's also an Envoy repository um, that uh, um, I think we, we would probably move um, yeah, so, so there's, there's a couple things, um, there, but, uh, but yeah, the main thing is the ambassador repository. Got it. Uh, out of curiosity, the, the Envoy repository, um, what's, what it, does that have? Uh, so we maintain a couple patches to Envoy, usually at any moment in time that we're still sort of in the process of upstream. It's also where we, it's actually not a public repository or some parts of it are not public because, um, when they're embargoed. Uh, Envoy security patches, that's where we do our work. Um, so it would not actually necessarily be public. Uh, so um, because we, we test um, we test with embargo and Envoy um, and then we'll, we'll generate a release um, more or less the day the embargo is lifted. So. It makes sense. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Matt, if, if you're on um, uh, comments, thoughts, uh, uh, nothing specific. I think it would be a great addition to the to the ecosystem for sure. Cheers, man. Fair enough. I think uh, I might have run dry. <laughs> <laughs> Do uh, any, anyone else have questions for for Richard and for Daniel? No, but I have a different role. If we hear the cat, we must see the cat. I thought I, thought I had a cat too. I wasn't going to say. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, no, this is good. Thank you. Sure, sure. Okay, one, one second. It sounds super cute, Matt. But it like, the meow itself. Yeah. I thought it sounded super Hold cute. Hold on. Am I here? Okay, here. Here's my cat. Oh, okay. awesome. See, that's awesome. Yeah. That's exactly what we're <laughs> doing. That's totally worth it. That's worth <laughs> recording for uh, CNCF, yeah. Night, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Oh, fair enough. Uh, very good. Uh, gents, uh, thanks so much for spending the time. The presentation was, was fantastic. Uh, thanks for having your house in order, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. That makes these easier. Um, Thanks for the guidance from myself and Amy there early on that, as in we definitely like cribbed from some of the other um, examples shared to so appreciate the input there. That's super useful. Well, we wanted to deliver what was most uh, most useful as possible to yourselves. So that was really useful getting that, that insight from yourself and Amy there. Good, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, with that, we'll, uh, the, well, so, so Matt, um, myself and, um, and others in the community that will we'll be in, in touch to do the, you know, begin the, or go through due diligence. I mean, you know, go, go through, um, so. Nice. Great. Okay. Yeah. I, I was confused at first when we, when just before the call, I thought, well, that you guys were filing for sandbox and I thought how inappropriate that would be. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely incubation. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, that, that's, that was our one agenda item for, for this meeting. And so uh, that's it folks. We'll see you next time. Thank Thanks, you. Everyone. Good to see all of you. All right. Be well. Bye, guys. See ya. See ya.